So on Friday last week, I tried to update my PFSense box. It had been having a few issues for a long time. Um, you might have seen the errors that are at the top of the web UI when I logged in. So it had been complaining about a, a number of services crashing. So I tried to get updates working. That was actually failing. So I'd, I worked through some troubleshooting of re resetting the, the certificates and the package cache. And I got, ended up getting things working to the point where I could see the available update. And I forced through the update and the system failed to reboot. So it, it well, it rebooted, but it failed to start all of the services. So um, it was basically just a bare bones BSD system when it came back up. So I manually created all the VLANs um, just enough that I could get the internet working. And then I went to the PFSense website to download the latest ISO. Um, the, the problem with the PFSense box was just file system corruption. Like if I tried to do a find, for example, so I was looking for the, the, DN, the DHCP configuration file. So I did a find forward slash dash name, the, the leases.com file, and it, it got to a point where it hit the file system corruption and then there was a kernel panic and the system rebooted. So rather than fix the file system corruption, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna, I've got backups, I make backups of it all the time. So I'm just gonna go download the latest um, ISO or PFSense and I'm gonna install that, restore from backup and just get things back up and running. So I went to the PFSense website and I hit a little bit of friction because it now wants you to create an account, log in then download the ISO. So I didn't want, to do that, I don't, I'm not like necessarily morally opposed to doing that, although I don't think it's the best thing for them to implement. It was just too much friction. <laughs> I needed a router working. So I went to the OpenSense website and downloaded OpenSense instead. And rather than try and restore my PFSense back up into OpenSense, I thought, you know what, I'll start from, I'll start fresh. I had a few legacy things left over in my PFSense configuration anyway. Um, so it's good to start fresh. One of the first things I needed to do though was to set up DNS. So over here on the web UI, you can see that I'm in the unbound configuration. So OpenSense is really pushing the unbound DNS service. I was using DNS mask on PFSense. So when I got here, I was initially just going to set up DNS mask. But if you look at things like in this reporting section, this unbound DNS info, um, and that gives you like, good reporting, which you're not getting if you try and use DNS mask. So I thought I would try and adopt, um, unbound instead. But one of the first roadblocks I hit was in trying to configure the wildcard. So if you look at the documentation for OpenShift, we can say we need a few DNS entries. We need the API one, we need API int, and we need this wildcard on apps. So there's a few ways to do that. The first way I did that was I just tried to create a wildcard like, so we'll just delete this one. So the first thing I did was I tried to go in here and just create a wildcard for the entire domain. So I did, uh, I get ABNE shift.net. And I just tried to point that to the single node OpenShift device. If you had a full cluster, you would be pointing this to your router. So we'll call that SNU. Wildcard. Okay, so if we apply that, we'll see that the unbound service fails to start. Now, I didn't have these these other entries at the time. I was just trying to wildcard the entire domain. So, because everything points to the same endpoint, right? You can see all the IP addresses are the same. So I just tried to wildcard the entire thing. But we'll see that it fails to start. And the reason was in the log file, I was getting this error message, except it was for the the OpenSense host name itself, like the actual router host name. So um, error local data in redirect zone must reside at top of zone. So what I ended up doing was I found the advanced configurations and I ended up going through this and setting it up. So you can see in here, so this is the directory it tells you to set it up in. I've got this OKD file. So this is what was called OKD.conf when I was using it. Now we have a look in here, you can see that I'm basically manually configuring unbound to redirect traffic to um, the single node OpenShift device. And I've added the etcd records as well. But 
What I found was that's actually not necessary because if you edit this record and you just do apps and save that, apply, that actually works. So this is a little bit cleaner. You don't need to you know, manually SSH in and, and be editing things on the node itself. This wildcard should work. So you can see the Unbound service is running again there now. If we look here, we can see that there's no errors. And if we go over here, so if we do a dig for blah.apps, you can see that it's returning there now. So you know, I don't I don't have a record for that. We can see no matter what I do, it returns that. And then if we do an OC get CO, we can see that all of my operators were happy. So these were all unhappy because it tries to resolve like OAuth, for example. So authentication was down. It tries to resolve console. So console was down. It tries to um, resolve, you know, all these through through the route interface. So the route pods were failing to start. Um, so, yeah, what I found was I couldn't access any of my applications that were running in OpenShift until I fix this. So... In the end, this is a pretty good solution for me. I tend to create the routes outside of apps for most cases. I'm not sure why I started doing that. It just is a pattern that I do. So I need to go through and add in the DNS entries for Home Assistant and, and the other applications I have running. But at least now I've got access to, to Unify and, and network connectivity. So we go Unify. We can see that I'm able to to load the Unify application now and manage things through Unify. So yeah, you've, uh, you've got a couple of options there. You can uh, come and drop a comp file in this directory. So if I just move OKD to OKD.conf and then restart that service, delete this one, restart that service. So the service has been restarted there now and we come back here and do dig again. We can see that still works. So the downside is you can't see that entry now in uh, in your web UI. You can, I think you can still have it. I don't think the con, I don't think it causes any conflicts. We'll test that. So we'll save that. Apply. I don't think that causes a conflict. So you can still have it there. It's just handy to have this comp file though for the the PTR records, for example. We have a look. You know, you've, you've got the etcd record. You got the PTR there. Um, Whereas if you try and add something here, you've only got AAA, MX or A. I don't know, maybe there is a way to, to add PTR entries here, but it's a, not immediately obvious. So um, I quite like having that config file and you can see it hasn't caused a conflict there either having that wildcard in the web UI as well as um, in the config file. So yeah, that's all I've got. If you're trying to use OKD or OpenShift with an OpenSense router, this is how you can use the Unbound service on um, OpenSense to configure all of your DNS requirements. Hopefully that is useful. See you in the next video.